Hey, hey everyone, how's it going? Here's Quasar here, and we have an excellent, excellent surprise today. Welcome to my garage of Quasar's Customs. We are doing the movie series, a movie car series, and even though this isn't a movie car, this is probably one of the most iconic cars in uh, American Mexican culture. Um, what we have in front of us is the Gypsy Rose. Now, the Gypsy Rose was actually a car that was um, actually get, got national attention on a, a, a television series back in um, 1974 called uh, Chico and the Man. And um, actually, the only time you saw this car was in the opening and in the closing credits, right? Uh, so that was the only time you saw the car. Uh, Chico and the Man was a, a sitcom. Uh, came out like I said in uh, 1974. It only ran for four years. It had, um, um, I think it was four years, uh, four seasons, and it starred uh, a gentleman by you may know of by Freddie Prince. Um, he was the uh, Mexican American guy looking for a job or looking to do something with his life, right? And then um, I don't remember the old guy's name. But the um, Jack, oh jeez, um, dang, I forgot his name. Anyway, um, I believe his name was no, his name wasn't his. His, his name's Ed in the uh, the series, but his his real name's Jack something. I for, I forget it. But anyway, he's you know he's just this. He's an an old white guy, right? He he doesn't. He's kind of. Um, pushed all of his friends away he, he, he doesn't like anything that's happening and he's I think he's he owns like this little mechanic shop or something anyway when Chico comes calling right he's looking for a job and 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 Ed tries to push him away by you know um, I, I, I guess more or less by you know ha having some slurs and everything and and Chico actually you know wins him over by taking care of the garage cleaning up some stuff and ends up living in this van in this van that's at uh, Ed's uh, mechanic shop I guess it was right so wow I can't uh, that's interesting um, so that that's what the, the series was pretty much based around is based around you know their their relationship and um, their growing relationship so yeah and I mean this car this car was just in the opening credits it wasn't anywhere else can you believe it this car is is, is awesome it is phenomenal and <laughs> who would have thought that Ryan Peterson could have pulled this off yes Ryan actually pulled off the livery for this and you're going to absolutely love it when this thing is done no doubt in my mind this car is going to be one of your favorites there is no doubt in my mind um one thing i will say though is that this is coming out on a saturday right before february so february is what valentine's day right so expect this expect it to be on the cover of the facebook page no doubt about it i just um i'm very as you can tell i'm very tickled about this car I love the fact that he's that Ryan's done an awesome job of this. Um, so it really deserves a lot of credit. Uh, all right, let's see, well, cylinder, oh, drum cylinder. Let me pick up a few parts here and let me, let me think straight before uh, I get to talking too much more here. Um, Car didn't seem like it was in bad shape. I did pick it up um, from the junkyard, so uh, I got a plate, few bolt. So it wasn't in too bad. You know, even though it was um, in the junkyard, it wasn't in too bad a shape. But still, solid drive axle, and we'll have four. There we go. Oh, I need a fuel tank.
So yeah, when I said Freddie Prince, who's the first thing, you, who's the first person you would think of, right? Freddie Prince Jr., right? Freddie Prince Jr. in like the Scooby Doo movies. You know, when I hear Freddie Prince Jr., that's what I think it was the Scooby Doo movies. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I actually don't even know what else he, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. actually uh, uh, plays in. You know, uh, I, I don't follow him as an actor, so I have really, really no idea. Uh, oh, let me let me dump this out for a second. Hang on. Um, sell my parts. Anything under ninety-two percent was good. Okay. Yeah, so I don't have any idea. I don't have a clue as to what Freddie Prince does as an actor. Freddie Prince Jr., I should say. Um, Chico and the Man, like I said, it ran for four seasons. Um, and actually, only three seasons with uh, Freddie Prince. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Freddie Prince. Um, um, just he was had a battle with uh, drugs and alcohol and decided to um, try to take his own life and shot himself. And um, he was on uh, he was on medical support for you know machine support for some time, and um, they took him off of that. And that was during the third season of the show. Um, and it, you know, and it is tragic when something like that happens. The television shows um, they they really struggle. Um, I, I can think back to there was a show called Eight Simple Reasons. Uh, Jack, uh, oh, what was his name? I say one Jack Ritter. Um, he passed away suddenly, and um, the show was left, you know, kind of floundering. And 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 they they tried, you know, desperately to bring in some you know guest stars, and um, it just you know it just didn't didn't work out. Um, the same with Chico and the Man. Unfortunately, when Freddie Pan Prince passed away, um, the last three—I think was—I think I read the last three episodes was uh, Freddie Princeless. I guess is the, is the best way to say that. Um, and the characters were just saying that he had went to he went to Mexico to to see his friends or whatever. Uh, let me grab these real quick. Need 15 inch rims, right? And these are going to have to be chrome, baby. These are going to have to be chrome. All the way down here somewhere, right? Yeah. So let's get a set of these in chrome. Let's go chrome these bad boys up. Yeah, as unfortunate as it was, he he uh, attempted to take his own life, and well, I guess in, in hindsight, I guess he actually did succeed because um, they had to take him off life support. So, um, as unfortunate as it is, uh, they they tried, you know, in season four to uh, move on without Freddie Prince. They introduced a a, a younger. Uh, Mexican American a young boy who was uh, I don't know he was what 12 years old 12 10 11 12 years old I guess I don't remember but um, you know he was he was uh, a, a young kid they that they found in his uh, uh, in Ed's trunk of his car hiding and um, uh, the fourth season was basically uh, him and this this young boy and they they introduced like ed's um i don't know like his niece or something um 215 50. wait a minute what was, what, what was that what was that doesn't tell me what type of tire that is hang on one second here let me take it so i like these tires so i won't have to put these back on it I like the the smaller white wall on it. Okay, so let's see what what is uh white. Okay, tire A. So A. Need four. 
15, 215. Is that 50 profile? Really? Was that what it was? That was a 50 profile. Okay. 215. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, Jones. And you know, I, I do remember the show a little bit. I do remember, I do remember the young kid um, being part of the show. I really do. Um, I mean, in 74, 74 to 78 is when it ran, so, geez, I don't know. It just tells you how old I am anyway, but <laughs> um, I do remember watching it, and it was all part, of, you know, and honestly, that show actually started, I don't know, it just seemed like there was a, oh man, that, that, that one didn't get painted. I didn't want that. Dang it. Messed up. So I gotta figure out which one that's gonna be. And, uh, alright, let's go ahead and put this one on. There we go. Um, which one's not painted? It must be this one. Yes. There we go. Alright, we'll figure this out. Uh, but like I was saying, yeah, I do remember seeing the show, and I remember it being, I don't know, even even back in the 70s, you know, it was a whole culture shift in L.A., and I it just, I remember it just, it was a, a kind of a shift on TV as well, to be honest with you. You know, a, a cultural shift on TV, which I mean, it was a good thing. I mean, um, not a whole lot of people liked. I don't think a whole lot of people liked the show, to be honest, just because of you know, just because of the cultural diversity that was in it. But uh, you know what? Screw them. It was a decent enough show. It should have stayed on. Unfortunately, you know. It, unfortunately, we lost Freddie Prince in the process. So, yeah, the fourth season um, didn't really go with that well. Of course, you know, like I said, they had the uh, the little twelve-year-old that was, you know, did a good job, and then the niece came in. Oh, yeah, and what I was going to say, what I had read, I don't remember. I, I remember, I remember, but I don't remember. How does that sound? Uh, I remember um, Charo. If you guys, if anybody remembers Charo, Charo is kind of this very flamboyant um, um, Spanish Latin dancer. I don't even know what I'm sure of her um, ethnic background. Um, I'm probably screwing that all up, but um, she was even part of the show, and she was really big, you know. So they, much like you know, like I'd said, like with eight simple reasons. They, they've they try to bring in some stars to help um, bolster the show and try to keep it going and unfortunately you know no matter who the stars are the chemistry just doesn't work sometimes and unfortunately that's what you know the end of this one was um, and as unfortunate it is it, now reading reading through here um, it was probably a very emotional time the very last show um, where Ed just, you know, he sees the, the little 12 year old playing uh, Chico's guitar, or messing with Chico's stuff, and, you know, Ed goes crazy. Because, you know, even though in the very beginning Ed didn't like Chico, you know, he really um, grew to love Chico, you know. And they became very good friends, so. Um, and the little boy, like, runs away or something, and. Um, Ed goes after him and explains to him, you know, who Chico was and that he died. And they don't explain how he died, right? 
Um, so it was just kind of like left up because they went, you know, chico -less. Chico list, I guess is the way to say. It. You know, the last three, or four episodes of the of the third season, so you never knew what was going on. And then, um, you know, during the final the final season, the final episode, you find out that, yep, Chico was dead. So for a car that only shows its doors inside for maybe two seconds in the opening and closing credits, this car gained national, national attention, and really brought about the whole lowrider culture. Oh, let me grab that sway bar there too, might as well grab that. Alright. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, let's go ahead and get this stuff guard here. <sighs> Parts, uh, suspension. Let's go ahead and get these. Alrighty, let's clear out our parts. There we go. And what do we have here? Brakes. What do we need? We need a caliper, two discs, two pads, suspension, bottom. Ooh, a knuckle. Damn, I gotta do a, a whole cross member too. Well, doesn't that about suck? Um, I guess, I mean, that's what you get when you pull a car out of the junkyard, you know what I mean? And this car deserves to be pulled out of the junkyard. Um, this car, the Gypsy Rose, was never... Um, this one, I will say, this one, in fact, is the third of the series of cars that was, was done up, right? This is the third iteration of the Gypsy Rose. And um, it got its name because um, uh, Jesse, uh, I say Valdez, Valdez, Vasquez, Valdez, I think it's Valdez. His grandmother loved roses. So that's where this came from this this how the car actually originated from is his grandmother loved roses so you know he put roses on an impala and, and impalas actually were i mean they were the the, the low riding street scene vehicles you know what i mean uh ventilated Okay, let's go here. Bottom suspension arm. Yeah, I need to stop talking for a minute so I can concentrate on what I'm doing here because this is going to be. Okay, I need a B. Cross member B. Regular sway bar. Two wheel hubs. Wow. Bushings, bunchy sway link, and make. Uh, Pushings. There we go. Upper suspension arm, bearings, and caps. There we go. Poof. Alright, uh, now sell off all my used parts. Got my, yep, my spring. Yeah, so. Seriously, this is the third car that was done up like this. Uh, let's see here. Something's happening to my headset. Sorry, hang, hang on a second. I'm trying to figure this out.
Okay, and as I'm thinking about, there we go. Oof, I couldn't hear anything. Um, and as I was thinking, it's Jesse Valadies. Valadies, I think it is. Valadies. He is the original creator of the Gypsy Rose. Now, the first Gypsy Rose, um, they believe, was a 1963 uh, Impala. So that was the first one. I'm not sure what happened to it. I, I, I believe I read that it was wrecked. Um, but it was the first one. So the second one um, was another 1963 Chevy Impala. And it was dubbed the Gypsy Rose. And, you know, it was, it was the pride of East L.A. And these guys were very proud of their cars. And uh, these, these low riders, they were almost like gangs, right? Because... You know, you, you you rolled up into somebody else's, you rolled up into another uh, uh, car club's territory, you know, you best be expecting to, expected to um, throw down. Well, um, unfortunately, um, from what I've read, uh, a rival club actually got a hold of the, uh, the second iteration of the Gypsy Rose and um, destroyed it. You know, uh, I, I I don't know what the deal was. I think um, there was some some animosity because one, who puts roses on cars, right? Who puts flowers on cars? And I think that was probably a big thing. You know, everybody hated that idea, but I think they hated it outwardly, you know, and expressed that. But I think I seriously looking at this car. I am not a big lowrider fan myself, and I'm not into the whole lowrider culture, but this car is flipping beautiful. And, I mean, I can say that, just, um, and honestly, I didn't even think about it till uh, Matthew Moore from the Facebook page had suggested it. And Matthew had gotten with uh, Ryan Peterson, and Ryan Peterson was able to get the livery done up on it and he has done a tremendous job on it so i will link um the livery down below eventually but if you really want the livery i would suggest go over to the facebook page and ask to become a member over there and um it, it will be over there ryan is is very proud of this and he so so he should be i mean this is an awesome uh, it was an awesome undertaking by him. And you'll get to see his efforts here very, very soon. Uh, I'm taking all these parts off. The... What is that? I don't remember seeing that in there. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, what I wanted to do was... Let's get rid of all the interior pieces here. I drag this over before we get working on the motor. Clean out the rat's nest that could be the interior. That's actually a nice color. I like it, but it's not it's not gypsy rose material right there. That is just is not gypsy rose material. Uh, what do we have for an interior? We have a uh, front cape for rear seat in the Typhoon. So let's go get let's go get that stuff here. Uh, bench front cape, got it. Let's roll down here for the buckets to get to the Typhoons. Where are you, my little Typhoons? There we are. And no lowrider is complete without the proper steering wheel. I mean, come on. Oh. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, the only thing about the uh, Gypsy Rose that we can't do here is the uh, Crush Pink, or uh, I think it was a pink, 
pink velour interior. Just can't get that happening, so... <sighs> we just don't have that option. You know, and if we had that option... I can only imagine what kind of interiors we would see coming out of some of the builds, you know what I mean? Go, get that done. It almost looks like it's in a, it's in a primer state, doesn't it? The car. Get that in, get that in that in and we're going to just drink we're going to yank the motor out of here we're not going to use it there we go motor nice and pulled let's go ahead and dump all these pieces out because we're not going to use any of this all right now for uh, let's go ahead and get all the body work for it. Let's get the body work done. Uh, Impala SS. Can I get the Impala SS? Yes! Uh, yeah, this is the 409 one. And we also have the Street Rod one. Um, so yeah, this one would be this one right here. Um, two variations of this, and I will put the link down below, but just be aware. Um, yeah, I'll have to try to fix some of these icons in here. Uh, let's see here. Straight rod, trunk, street rod. It's basically the same car, just kind of a uh, some different, a little bit of difference uh, as far as how it's the stance is a little bit different and uh, motor in it. And this is before we could have the uh, the engine swaps, right? This this mod actually came out before the engine swaps did. all taken care of here okay I think we are are we a hundred percent on the body Whew. oh we're probably missing the license plate yeah all right <clears throat> let's go to work on the engine That's the one we want, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's see if we can... All right, let's see. Do we have any parts? We have no parts. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Uh, engine. Thank you. We're going to roll through this, and we are going to do this in one shot. I don't know why I'm thinking about that. Let me get the throttle bearing. <laughs> I always, always forget that piece of it. Um, I need the cam gear, but I need the overhead. There we go. Cam from the performance shop. No clips, carburetor. Couple of clips for the distributor, definitely. The crankshaft. Three bearing caps. Need the engine block. Sorry for my mouse being all messed up. I, I really should change my mouse, but. lazy about it I guess okay that's one engine cover two engine valve cover 
Headers we get from the exhaust, from the performance shop. Filter from the performance shop. Don't need any of those, don't need any of that. We're good with all of that. Oh, single intake. Uh, that's not in a foreman shop. I wish it was, though. You hear me complain about it every time I build this engine. Oil filter. Oil pan. Oh, my goodness. Uh, eight rings. Our steering pump will get after a bit. Fan. Sixteen rockers. Eight bearing ca uh, rod caps. Filter from the performance shop. Covers, covers. Uh, serpentine belts. A. And where's B? B. We need a starter. I'll pick that up while I'm here. Uh, timing chain. Timing chain cover. Let me get some of these pieces and we'll we'll tar start talking shop here again. All right. Um, to the boost shop. Alternator. Camshaft. Carburetor. It's times two. Exhaust manifold. I only need one fuel filter. I don't know why I was trying to get two in there. Though I wish we could get two in there. Bring up the performance just a little bit. Takes the pistons. Air intake. Spark plugs. Power steering pump. Um, I think that's it. Uh, gearbox. Clutch pressure plate. Flywheel. Uh, we might as well just dip down in here. Go ahead and pick up transmission. Exhaust here. I'm going to need uh, two middle mufflers. Two of the these mufflers. All right. I think we are good for right now. I've actually got a little bit more going on here. All right, so back to the Gypsy Rose and what she's all about, right? All right, so she made she makes her debut. Um, this one, anyway. This is the, like I was saying, this is the third iteration of the Gypsy Rose. The two before it were 63s. Um, I believe one was in a car, the first one was in a car accident, and the second one was destroyed by a rival car club. Didn't like them. Um, any more of the car clubs are more about helping each other out than they are trying to destroy each other's cars. But, uh, yeah, it's good to know, right, if you're out there in East L.A. Um, so, this one in particular, Jesse Valadez, Valed, ah, oh, jeez, how to pronounce that? I am so horrible with names. <sighs> um... J 
Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Jesse, uh, Val, Valadez, Valadez, Jesse Valadez, Valadez, okay. Anyway, sorry, I'm just, like I said, I'm horrible with names, so. So, this guy decides to build a third one. So this one was going to be a 64 Chevy Impala. And, what, I don't think I finished, oh, I don't have a water pump? How dare I? I don't think what I finished up earlier was, um, <clears throat> the low rider community loves the um, long, sleek sedans, right? It's just, just, just what they liked, and so the Impalas were definitely part of that that club, right? Um, this one in particular, a '64 Chevy. Um, you know, 63s, 62s, the Impalas, I love those cars. They are just, uh, they're just iconic. I, I don't know how else to, I mean, my dad, when I grew up, my dad had a 64, he had a 63, he had a 66. So, I mean, you know, just by hearing me tell you that, that my, most of my childhood, I was in a, an Impala, honestly. So um, I just grew up with them. Uh, it's mainly what my dad would drive all the time was an Impala. I don't think I've ever. Um, I think he had like two different 66s. He had a 65 um, that I wanted, a convertible. Actually, it was a Caprice, 65 Caprice. Now, that was something that... Um, you know, if you get into the low rider community, a, a Caprice was a, a, a night is a nicer is a as an upgrade from an Impala. So, um, in case you Ford guys ever wanted to know what the difference between an Impala and a Caprice was, the Caprice usually had wood trim and was a little bit nicer. That's about it. Um, that's about how it went. But anyway, on this car, right, on this car is 150 painted roses, right? 150 painted roses. It's in a, like, a pearl pink and white. It's, um, and I believe I read that it has 20 pounds. Oh, yeah, you heard me. 20 pounds of clear lacquer on it. Is that freaking nuts or what? Um, I believe right now, if you are in LA, um, probably can't do it now just because of uh, the COVID crap, but um, um, at the, I think it's a, the Peterson Automotive uh, Museum, it's there. So please, by all means, if you are in the area and you, you want to see something, uh, if you're in L.A., hey, go by there, take a picture if you could, and uh, throw some pics up on Facebook on our page. That would be great. But yeah, 150 painted roses on this thing. Now, when I slap delivery on this, you are just going to fall in love with this. You are, because it's, to me, it's, it's love. It's just, like I said, I was not a low rider, you know, I'm not into the whole low rider culture or anything, but this was a beautiful paint job. And for people to diss it because it had roses painted on the car, that, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of mean. Because the roses, like I said earlier, was, you know, inspired, it was, the inspiration came from his grandmother. Um, unfortunately, he passed away, Jesse passed away. 2011, I think I read. He passed away 2011. Um, and I believe in, I want to say, 2017. Uh, yeah, it was um, inducted into the Historic Vehicle Associations for National Historic, for the National Historic Vehicle Register. So not only was it a, 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 
piece of history, but it's a piece of cultural history, you know. Um, no, not this. Go ahead and put that in. So, isn't that awesome? His son now owns the car. So, that's just... You know what? I didn't even finish this thing, and I threw it in here. How crazy is that? All right, I'll finish the build inside the car. It's not painted yet, so I'm not too worried about it. So yeah, his son actually owns the car right now, and it's in the museum. Um, I would love to be able to see that car in person. It's just just a piece of I just very iconic history. The whole, I guess you would say, it was the launch of the lowrider culture in East LA. This car would be um, the the founding father. Yeah, I would. That's what I would have to say. All other, you know, all other lowriders pale compared to this one. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I can't, I can't stop thinking or talking about this car. I think it's just an awesome, it's an awesome paint scheme. Um, let's go ahead and can I put oil in this already? Hey, hey, look at that! I don't even have the other side on, and I can put oil in it. I've never even tried it. But there you go. All right. Mosey on over to the other side and take care of the valve train on this side. Man, I can't believe I messed that up. Usually I have the full engine built before I throw it in the car, so sorry, I apologize for that. I just got so excited about this. 150 roses. That's a lot of roses. And I think, uh, don't, you know, I may be wrong, but I think with every iteration of this car, more roses were put on it. So this one had to been the ultimate of roses. So there you go, the history of the Gypsy Rose and Chico and the Man. I always say Chico and the Man, but it's Chico and the Man, so. This is almost done. We'll throw her on the dyno just to give it a quick uh, look see to see what kind of uh, exhaust. See, I don't have those. And, of course, I sold or junked off my drive shaft, so let me go grab that. Um, oh, wait a minute. Did I, did I put a coil on there? Surely I did. Yeah, there's a coil on it. I must, uh, I must have picked up a spare coil. All right, um... Going to the exhaust. Let's get uh, a couple of the C's here. Yep. And uh, get a drive shaft, and then I think we'll be good. Yep, 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 and drive shaft. There we go. Alrighty. We are golden. Um, only thing we don't have is plates. We're going to go, of course, with California plates. I don't know if I can put it on Gypsy R O S E. <gasps> it fits. Cool. Alrighty. Send you to the dyno for right now, because we're going to do the dyno test first before I show you this livery. Alright, let's see if this little rider has to offer.
Got a little bit of pep, pushing a little over 500 horse with 723 pounds of torque. So yeah, she's she's got a little bit of balls, which is good. Now, for what you've been waiting for. We are going to paint this bad boy pink. Right? So we are going to paint her. Uh, let's see. Red. And as pink as pink could be. It's kind of a strange pink, but... Uh, yeah, maybe. We'll go 1590. How's that? Okay. We're going to spray it. Then we're going to put a livery on it. You ready for this? You ready? For this. Look at this beauty. Paint it. Look at the beauty on this thing. 150 roses. Isn't this a beautiful thing? Isn't this just one of the best looking cars you've ever seen? Oh my god. Look at this thing. It is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and check that out inside the trunk is detailed too. Ryan has outdone himself on this. This is absolutely outstanding. Let's go ahead and put her out here. Look at this thing. This is, I love this car. This car is awesome. There you go. We have Chico and the man, 19, 1964 Chevy Impala Lowrider. Can't ask for a better looking car. I mean, and right underneath here, right underneath here. Take a look. Gypsy Rose. Now, I want to thank, big thanks for Matthew Moore for suggesting this car. Um, Gollywog for the, 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 the mod itself. So if you want this mod, go go to Gollywog's uh, Steam Workshop and grab it. And Ryan Peterson for putting this thing together. Between Matt and Ryan, um, you guys did an awesome job on this, and, and I just, I love it. I love it. So, I, I don't know what else I can say about this car, but uh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it, and I loved putting this thing together. Until the next movie car, I have this is Quasar saying goodnight, and I'm out.